Thank you. So, I love a good debate. So I'll argue issues with my friends, and I really enjoy the back and forth of argument and counter-argument. And it's kind of funny, I'm known as the logic guy. And they'll say things like, oh, there goes Ian and his logic. And I remember one day I was debating something with a friend, and I challenged him with a question. What is the evidence backing up your claim? And he rolled his eyes and he said, oh, Ian, do you need evidence for everything? And, and I paused and I thought, yeah, because how else would you decide what to believe? And that's kind of the mindset that I want to share with you today. And I believe that everyone has a responsibility to use their mind, ask questions, and engage in critical thinking. And I say responsibility because in this era of fake news and instant sharing, when you stop engaging in critical thinking, bad things will happen. So what do we mean by critical thinking? I mean, there's a lot of different variations, but in general, it's using reason to make a judgment about what to believe. And one of the earliest proponents of critical thinking was the Greek philosopher Socrates. And his idea was that you can't trust the powers that be to give you good information. You need to figure out everything by yourself. And the way to do that is by asking questions. And he believed that thinking is driven by questions and not answers. An answer is a full stop. A question reveals new nuances to the argument. And so questions like, do you have evidence? Why do you believe what you do? Uh, what is the context? And it's only by asking questions can you judge the integrity of an argument. So all this sounds very dry, very academic, so, so why do I feel so passionately about critical thinking? Uh, so I think I'll give you some examples that I think you'll understand. So this first example, uh, this was something shared to Facebook by a couple of my contacts. And you, know, you see this quite often, people share scary looking health warnings. And, and so this particular claim says, mobile phone radiation causes cancer. You know, this is a concern that a lot of people have, and so sounds plausible. And they have a scientific looking image, something scary happening to this guy's face. And a warning at the bottom, never ever put your phone next to your bed. So it sounds, it sounds scary, right? And you want to share this important information with your friends, so click share. But let's pause for a moment and engage in some critical thinking and see where we end up. So first of all, when I look at this, it, it looks scaremongering, so designed to make it look scary. And that already raises some, some red flags, but let's keep going. So we click on the link. And you see a website. Uh, this is some Taiwanese health website. Oh, it looks okay, but then I see you. They have 1.2 million fans on Facebook, including six of my friends. <laughs> and and you know, one of the obvious questions when dealing with something making scientific claims is, what are their sources? And the only source that they have is something called Healthy Arabella. So it doesn't sound like any scientific journal I, I've heard of, but uh, let, let's see. Let's follow the rabbit hole. And so you click on the link, and I think the actual website is down, but if you look at their Twitter, it looks like a blog and they make claims like this. So it already is looking very dubious, this piece of information. So let's compare it to actual science. There we go. And you know, so I looked at some peer-reviewed scientific journals, and this is the uh, CDC and the FDA. And the scientific consensus is that there's no evidence for a link to cell phone radiation and cancer. So as you can see, by going through a very simple process of critical thinking, uh, we've shown that this piece of news is, is literal fake news. But what makes me really angry is that otherwise highly intelligent, highly educated people will see that headline and think, oh, that, that looks scary, and share it without a second thought. Because clearly, if they thought about it, they would very quick, quickly realize that this is actual garbage. And so, you might ask, well, what's the big deal if someone decides to leave their phone out of their bedroom uh, when they sleep at night? Well, the problem is when that train of thought, that sharing of pseudoscience leads to bigger problems. Bigger problems like the anti-vaxxer movement. 
So parents don't vaccinate their kids because they heard of some scary stories, and what happens? There's a global resurgence in measles. So as you can see, all of a sudden, not engaging in critical thinking has potentially deadly consequences. And so I'm with another example, uh, one that's very interesting, but quite terrifying, actually. So this one's in the field of politics, and so this is something that happened in, in America earlier this year, in January. So the story is that uh, there's a bunch of white schoolboys wearing Trump hats, and they surrounded this Native American elder and uh, shouted racist things at him, and started chanting, build the wall, build the wall, like a Trump slogan. And so obviously there was outrage, and, and rightly so. And the whole thing blew up, and it was on every major news website. And you look at every website, and it says that they were mobbing him, they were taunting him, so these are clearly the bad guys. And on social media, it caught fire. Uh, and not surprisingly, so people see something, it fits with their worldview, and they get outraged, and then they retweet. And, and then it starts to get nasty. So you have like blue tick Twitter users, so like celebrities and journalists, calling for doxing the kids. And so doxing is revealing the personal information of, of these school children. Or there's people calling for violence. And the kid in the, in the picture, he was, he actually received death threats. And so I saw all this and and I thought to myself, well, all this is, this is really interesting. You know, maybe I should look at the full video. You know, I, I want to feel outraged too. Because it feels good to be outraged. You know, I, I totally knew these guys were terrible, you know. So, so I looked at the video, and well, I thought to myself, maybe I should ask some questions. Like, you know, what is the context? What is the evidence? Uh, is, are there any biases involved? And I watched the video, and I was shocked. I was shocked because the entire narrative was wrong. So the, it was actually the elder that walked over and approached the kids and confronted them. They were actually singing their school song and, and not chanting, build the wall. There was not a single instance of build the wall. And it was actually the, the schoolboys that were receiving uh, racial abuse from a, from a third party. And as you can see, it's kind of crazy that all of these major news outlets uh, that you think are trusted names, so CNN, you know, Washington Post, New York Times, they all, they all got it wrong. They all jumped to a really convenient conclusion that kind of fits with their worldview and the worldview of their audience. And so, so as you can see, when you stop engaging in critical thinking, um, these bad things will happen. So, I, I would urge all of you if, you, if you see something and you're thinking about sharing it, then think twice. Stop and have a think. Ask some questions, because I think the world will be better for it. Thank you.